What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Gmire's World. Today we're going to be talking about how OP the team is and some of the additions that we made and some of the things that can still be added to make it really, really good. Uh, today is Wildcard Wednesday, so you have the Veterans uh, promo out right now. I'm going to make sure you guys understand this again. For those of you guys that are subscribers and you guys are always watching my content, first of all, thank you. But also, you guys reap the benefits of the mo you know most of the people that play the game because I'm always going to let you know what's really good, what's going on right now in the game and why you should be doing it so pretty much after this week we're going to be able to get another free fantasy pack from all the previous wildcard wednesdays all right so right now this week we got randall cobb malcolm smith uh autry sheldon richardson and nick Follington. right so look with all these guys make sure you get those challenges done because the next five stars you're going to be getting a free player all right, so I'm just making sure you guys understand that. Don't forget to do it. It does expire after the week, so you cannot go back and get previous things. All right, that's very, very important. So make sure you're staying up to date with the challenges. Also, uh, within the team of the year challenges, you can get a 96 overall NCAT at 100 stars. All right, now I've been told the feedback that I've received is that the defensive side of this is a little bit more involved. I have not checked it out myself, but I will to make sure that you guys know what's good. I, it's just they, they've released so many things all at the same time. It's very, very difficult to keep up with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to figure that out together, uh, but we need to get a lot of these stuff done. Now, this one with the wild card, you get the 93 overall Roger Saffold. I don't really care about that one, but the one before that I did this one uh, and got the free card that was there, the Leonard Floyd. All right, and then we actually quick sold him earlier because he sucks. But those are just some of the other free cards and some of the things that you need to know right now. Uh, Gridiron Forge, we started, but we're not um, at the point of getting anything yet. Um, obviously, we have to get to uh, 80 stars for the uh, DJ Reader. Uh, it does tell you when it expires, I believe. Okay, yeah, so the new Forge arrives February 23rd. So you have up until then to complete that. So that's everything that's going on right now that you need to be aware of. Um, if you have any additional questions or comments, you know, obviously uh, the, the, the viewers here, uh, some of my diehards, bro, appreciate you guys. They will see your comment and respond and try to help you to the best of their ability to get your Madden game up because the game is rather simplistic, but we have to make sure that it's overly simplistic so you can enjoy it and not have the rage that I have because the game is wild gameplay wise, but what's the most fun? You know, building your team. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the additions that we've added and why we've added it and some of the players that I've seen that have been really, really good. So you can see them stand out right there. Andrew Whitworthington, uh, Cordell Patterson, Darren Wallerton, and Trent Brownington, right? All these guys right now, I would tell you that they are probably the best at their position. Uh, the right guard from Dallas, uh, Zach Martin, he's not as good as Quentin Spain. So if you have him, I would leave that. Also, Quentin Nelson is very strong. So I didn't really like that team of the year player, but it's, it's up to you guys what you want to do. But just to give you guys some insight into it, these are big boys out there on my edges, right? So when you look at them, 6'7", right? 330, that's ridiculous on the edge. So what happens is, th this is what happens and this is what a lot of you guys are starting to realize, right? When you get an edge rusher like a LT or Khalil Mack or all these other guys that they have going out there, um, the, way, the way that your left tackle attacks them, you can see based on the size whether they're gonna get the shed successfully, even if they get a shed animation to start. For instance, if somebody contains, right, and you see your guy trying to fight around, like your defender is trying to fight around, if the tackle is big and heavy, you can still run to that side, and when it's released, if you have escape artist, you can beat it. But if the players are undersized, if you have smaller linemen, they will get routed and you're gonna get dealt with accordingly. So you see him at 6'7", I had to get rid of the other guy I had that was 6'4", uh, because it didn't make any sense to keep him with a guy that's big and he has similar strength and all that other good stuff. Now, Trent Brown on the other side, he's a 6'8", full man. Like he's 100% all man, dude. 6'8", 380. So I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I don't really see a lot of pressure from the right because even if they're in a shedding animation, and um, you see them like trying to get around like with the power move, he just holds them up because he's so big. So what happens is this, right? The Raiders theme team or whoever else he played for, the Patriots and whoever else, um, and the Niners, they're winning right now. All these theme teams, if you have him, because with all his, you know, the, the, the pluses from being a theme team, he is outrageous. And it's just point blank period. He's so big, it's not much you could do to the guy. 
So I really, really like this card. And it, you guys know, it's gone from me hating his card when it was trash with the original ones to really loving it because he's such a big man and he's able to do so much. So those things are very important uh, in that regard. I wanted to share that with you on the offensive side of the ball. Now, when we jump to the defensive side of the ball, Miles Garretton, Daniel, uh, what is that, Daniel Hunterton and Denzel Wardington. These three guys, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you guys what's going on. These guys are no-brainers. So if you guys have been keeping up with the videos, you know that, you know, what happened and how we got them for really cheap and all that good stuff. Now, one of the things that I wanna point out about Miles Garrettson is his strength. If you're a Browns theme team and you have, like I said, 99 strength anywhere on the field, it's very, very noticeable. So if you have him on the field, you will notice it, okay? It's something that you can visibly like, yo, damn, bro, he just grabbed that guy by the throat and threw him in the corner. Like, you can see it with Miles Garrettson. Now, with Daniil Hunter, it's a little bit different because he's not as strong, but he's fast. So he can get stood up in situations where Miles Garrett will never get stood up. But if you need to zone him, um, he'll go there. He's not gonna, he's picked off one pass in like, you know, 40 attempts. But he'll, he's fast enough if you zone him from the D-line to run back and actually do stuff. So he's, he's useful, but because he's not as strong, he will get ran over. Old Lyman will grab him by the throat and throw him in the air like a little kid, all right? But when you send a blitz, for instance, I run the 4361. when you send that blitz, he's gonna help the edge guy next to him get off the block fast because he has all the numbers with the thresholds. All right, the simple fact of the matter is he just doesn't have the strength. So it's noticeable when he makes contact, how he's able to get off of that pressure. So that's a major factor. Now, we get to Denzel Ward. Uh, we got rid of Sean Taylor because we didn't think Sean Taylor was working out for us. It was a mutual exclusive, yo, go F yourself type thing. So I told him he was fired. He's like, all right, cool, but am I really fired? I was like, yeah, and I don't like you also. So it got really nasty, but we got rid of him. Now, Denzel Ward is a 99 speed on anyone's theme team. That is a huge plus because what happens is I don't play man coverage. So if I put him in a soft squat, we all know the soft squat's been nerfed. They don't run with them up the field the way they used to. But if you zone him correctly or bring him out in like a deep blue out of a cover three, it's almost impossible to get behind him. All right. Now, there, here's something else I want you to know. He's only been Moss once. And funny enough, it was by Moss. But Moss was out of bounds, so the play came back. It was uh, during the live stream today on Twitch. If you guys are not subscribed to G Miles World Gaming, please do so. We got Resident Evil going on over there, and we got the uh, the broadcast from Twitch uh, for Madden 22 that's live also over there. But you'll be able to see what I'm talking about with the gameplay. So 99 speed, 98, 98 excel on any theme team, in my opinion, is worth a try. The 511 guys will get dominated, though. All right? I want you to understand that. He will get mossed occasionally. If you want to rage about it, that's fine too. But I just want you to understand, even with Sean Taylor there, I was getting mossed. So Sean Taylor was a 98 speed. This guy's a 99 speed. Some of you guys talk about Jeremy Chin, you know, coming in at uh, 6'3", balling out. I just want to give him a couple more games. Will he get raid sold? Probably. But right now, I think he's one of the better options uh, that are available right now. So those are all of the team of the year players that have been added. The team is looking really crazy. Shout out to you guys that are with me every day as we build it. But we have a lot more to do. And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to want to be there when we start getting to that point. I want to thank you guys and girls for watching. Hopefully you're having a great day. Until next time. One love, y'all.